Hi there everyone. Ever since I launched the Supernova 2207 a few months ago, I have been inundated with requests to expand the range with more sizes. Particularly from those of you looking for a more capable motor to swing a larger 7 or 8 inch prop. And that's why I am so excited today to be able to announce the Supernova 2807. This motor uses the same design approach as before to find a magnetically optimized design for that larger 28mm stator size, and it delivers more power, more torque, and better efficiency than any other motor in its weight class. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through all the key features of this new motor on the bench, then we're going to be taking a look at the performance numbers and seeing how it compares to a raft of other 7-inch motors. At the end of the video, I'm going to be letting you know where you can get hold of this motor, and also what my plans are for future motors in the Supernova range. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. All right, so let's take a look at this Supernova 2807 on the bench. Starting with the top of the bell design, you can see that we have a five twin spoke layout with lots and lots of open area to allow air to flow down through the motor and keep everything nice and cool. We have a prop gripping feature machined into the top. And if you look around the edge of the motor, you may be able to see evidence of balancing compound. So this means that RC and power have individually balanced every single motor to make sure that it produces the minimum possible amount of vibration when it spins. Looking at the color scheme now, we have this blue and gold color scheme with a matching blue prop nut. And I may be biased, but I think this is the most beautiful color scheme that RC and Power have ever produced. And I really love the way this motor looks. It has a unibell design with an aluminium bell extending all the way down over the steel flux ring. And this provides the maximum possible area to bond the steel flux ring into the motor. And that improves durability. And it also improves the aesthetic of the motor because it just looks like a single piece. Turning the motor over, we have a lightweight motor base cutout with 19 millimeter motor mountings. We're gonna talk a little bit more about these uh, cutouts later on when I take this motor apart. We've got an 11 millimeter bearing with a four millimeter shaft and an M3 shaft screw that's Loctited in place with blue Loctite. So if you want to take this motor apart, you can do. You just need to warm this screw up slightly with a soldering iron and then that blue Loctite will release. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take this motor apart so I can show you some of the additional features inside this motor. So if we take a look at the inside of this motor now, you can see that we have the M3 shaft screw with the Loctite visible there on the thread. And at the top of the motor bell, we have this washer. And if I lift that washer up, you can see the green shock absorbing O-ring underneath. That's there to cushion the top bearing in a crash. Make sure your bearings stay running as smooth as possible for as long as possible. Inside the motor, you can see the magnets are inset into the steel flux ring and that those magnets are as wide as possible. So we're getting as much surface area of the magnet close to the stator to get the maximum performance out of the motor. And of course, the thickness of the magnet and the thickness of the flux ring is critical to making sure that you get the best possible performance. And that's what's been optimized with all of the finite element simulations. Looking now at the stated design, you can see these really neat windings that RC and Power are famous for. And of course, they're using their military grade 260 degrees centigrade rated enamel, which makes this motor almost impossible to smoke. If we look at the inside of the stator, you can see that the cutouts from the motor base extend all the way up to the top of the base here, all the way through the motor. And these cutouts help save a little bit of weight. This aluminium here is not a ferrous material. It doesn't add anything magnetically. So we wanna cut it away to save as much weight as possible whilst leaving some nice wide areas here to bond the silicon steel onto the base. So this design helps save a few tenths of a gram, helps improve the power to weight ratio of the motor. And it also allows us to have more flexibility on the inner diameter of the stator, which helps improve the magnetic performance of the motor. Inside, you can see these 11 by four millimeter bearings and they're push fitted in and then bonded. And we have one on top here and another one on the bottom of the motor here. All right, let's get some weights for this motor now. And I always measure seven inch motors with seven inches of wire. So this is seven inches of wire and the motor comes to 50 grams exactly. And just to prove that it's not a fluke, I'll swap it over with another motor. Again, okay, 49.9 grams. So it's about 50 grams. If you're flying it on an AOS 7, you will use about five and a half inches of wire and the motor will come to 49 grams. But the number for comparison is 50 grams. 
If we compare the weight of the Supernova 2807 to the other 7 inch motors that I've tested, you can see that a weight of 50 grams puts it in the middle of the range. It's heavier than something like the T Motor F90, but lighter than something like the Emax Eco 2, and very similar to the weight of most 2806.5 motors. Now that we've seen all the key features of the Supernova 2807 on the bench, it's time to see how it compares in terms of performance against all of the other 7 inch motors I've tested. And for that, we're going to have to take a look at the thrust test data. We're going to start by looking at measured KV. And I measure KV by driving the motor full throttle at 10 volts and then recording the RPM with an optical RPM sensor. Divide that optical RPM by 10 gives the KV in RPM per volt. Looking at the measured KV of the Supernova 2807, we can see that it tests out at almost exactly 1400 KV. And that's no accident because I ask RCM Power to label these motors according to their measured KV rather than the theoretical KV of the winding because I think that gives a more accurate representation of how the motor is going to behave and how it's going to feel when you fly it. Compared to the other 7-inch motors that I've tested, the Supernova has a higher KV than all of them. And that's no accident either. By optimizing the magnetic design of the motor, we're able to achieve slightly better efficiency. And I like to use that efficiency to push the KV a little bit higher and get more performance out of the motor. Now let's look at the thrust, power and efficiency of the motor. And I measure this using a throttle ramp from 0 to 100% throttle, powered from a 6S battery kept topped up to 24 volts by a power supply. My standard test prop for 7 inch motors is the HQ 7x3.5x3 V1S prop. Looking at the chart, we can see that the Supernova 2807 delivers just over 2.5 kilos of thrust on my 7x3.5x3 test prop, and that places it second, just behind the Emax Eco 2. Now of course, this chart doesn't take the motor weight into account, and if we look at a chart of thrust to weight ratio, we can see that the Supernova moves ahead of the Emax Eco 2 because it produces very nearly the same thrust at a significantly lighter weight. Looking now to efficiency, this chart shows the efficiency of all of the motors across a range of power levels. We can see that the Supernova 2807 sits somewhere in the middle of the pack at lower power levels, with its relative performance in terms of efficiency improving at higher power levels. Efficiency is always a trade-off. To make a motor very efficient, you typically have to reduce its performance or increase its weight. With the Supernova, we've tried to strike the perfect balance, making a motor that has excellent performance and lightweight with good efficiency. Now let's talk about torque. I measure the torque that a 7-inch motor is able to deliver by using it to accelerate a flywheel of a known inertia, 200 kilogram millimeter squared, from 3000 to 15,000 RPM as rapidly as possible when powered off a 6S battery topped up to 24 volts. This chart shows the maximum torque the motors can produce on my flywheel dyno test at 10,000 RPM, 50% throttle. And we can see that the Supernova 2807 tops the charts here, and it beats out the Emax Eco 2, despite weighing 4 grams less than that motor. And that's down to the magnetic design, an improved magnetic design gives more torque, and also the higher KV that the Supernova has, which again gives it more torque, particularly at higher RPMs. So we should expect that torque advantage to increase as we move up in RPM. Finally, it's time to look at the responsiveness of the motor. And to measure this, I use the motor to accelerate my HQ 7x3.5x3 V1S test prop from 10 to 50% throttle and back to 10% multiple times. I measure the change in RPM and the time taken to accelerate between the different throttle settings to calculate the maximum acceleration and deceleration that the motor is able to generate when powered off a 6S battery at 24 volts. This chart shows the responsiveness of the motor when accelerating and decelerating my test prop. And we can see that the combination of high torque and lower weight gives the AOS Supernova an advantage here and puts it ahead of all the other motors in terms of responsiveness. And this is going to be important for you as a pilot if you're primarily interested in getting very smooth footage and you want a quad that's very stable in the air. The faster a motor can change the RPM of the prop, the faster it can change the thrust level in response to commands from the flight controller. And that's what's going to give you the smoothest possible flight experience. Now that we've looked at all of these performance parameters individually, it's time to bring them all together and look at the summary scores. These scores are normalized by the average performance of all the motors that I've tested, which means that a score of 100% is average, a score of 110 is 10% better than average, and a score of 90 is 10% worse than average. We've got thrust, efficiency, torque, and responsiveness, and I've also added a total score, which is the average of all of the scores, and a weight normalized score, which is the total score multiplied by the ratio of motor weights. 
That allows motors that are slightly lighter to compete with motors that are slightly heavier by taking into account the relative weight. And what we can see is the Supernova 2807 has the best total score, so it's the best performing motor overall, and it also has the best weight normalized score. And I think this shows we found the right balance of performance and weight for this motor across all of the test parameters. That brings us neatly to the end of the video. If you'd like to pick up a set of Supernova 2807s, they're going to be available from all good FPV retailers or direct from RC and Power. I'll put links down in the video description. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy flying.